it says that you must contract with a custom manufacturer to procure widgets. So again, immediately we say this is an adverse selection question. We're going to read this question and find out more about the value that we can get out of the units that we order, the cost, whether it's a low cost job or a high cost job, and the probability of it being a low cost job. And it gives us all that information. The first question says, what is the binding selection constraint for this contracting problem? Well, remember the participation constraint was aimed at the high cost job and the selection constraint was aimed at the low cost job because we only had to worry because the selection constraint we also call the truth telling constraint, the incentive constraint. We only had to worry about him lying and saying that it was a high cost job when in fact it was a low cost job. So this was the truth telling constraint that they're asking for and let's take a look at what that looks like. Well, again, it's aimed at the low cost job. On the left side, we're gonna have the truth. And the truth is, he told us it's a low cost job, so we paid him for a low cost job, and costs were actually low. We had this fixed cost of 100, and we had our marginal cost of 0.5, and then we ordered our low cost jobs quantity, which is a bigger quantity. We're gonna make that equal or greater than to him, the lie. And the lie, again, he told us it's a high cost job, so we paid him for a high cost job, but everything about the cost was actually low. The $100 fixed cost and the 0.5 marginal cost was the low cost jobs cost, but we, we then ordered a high cost jobs quantity. So again, we're making, we're incentivizing truth telling saying, if you go ahead and tell us it's the truth, you'll be better off. The next question says, what is the quantity called for in the contract if cost are low, if cost is low? So Step one is, what are they asking for? And in this case, it's QL. They're asking for the quantity if costs are low. So we know that the selection constraint that's aimed at the low cost job was this from the previous question. We also need to find the participation constraint, which is aimed at the high cost job, which just says that the amount that we pay you is gonna at least cover your cost if it is a high cost job. And a high cost job was represented by the 200 plus one QH, and we're gonna distribute that negative sign through. Well, now we need to write profit. Remember, profit is the probability we're gonna have a low cost job times the value, the total surplus of that low cost job. Well, there, our value function was 5Q minus 0.25Q squared. So when it's a low cost job, we're gonna order a lot of units or QL. And then the cost to us is the contract payment or PL. 70% of the time we're gonna have a high cost job, so we're gonna order a lot less or QH. And the cost to us is that contract payment PH. So from here, we notice that we have some QLs and some QHs, but we also have PL and PH, and that's what we need to use the constraints for to substitute in for PL and PH. So we know PH is really equal to 200 plus QH. We can solve our participation constraint. We can look at our selection constraint and plug in for PH for 200 plus QH, because that's gonna enable us to have just QLs and QHs in PL. So we do that, we can combine like terms and solve this down to get PL is equal to 0.5 QL plus 200 plus 0.5 QH. We're now ready to plug it into profit. So I've split up profit into two lines here. This is our low cost job. This is our high cost job. And this question uh, just asks us for our quantity if costs are low. So we're just gonna take the derivative of this profit function with respect to QL. We can get rid of the 0.3 and divide both sides through by 0.3 and we solve for QL to be equal to nine in this case. The last question says, suppose you get a consultant's report that convinces you the probability of low cost is higher than you originally thought. What happens to the quantity called for when cost is high? So real fast, just imagine this profit function. Real fast, imagine that this 0.3 was really a 0.9, and this would then therefore be a 0.1. Well, what would happen to QH if that happened? If you're ever confused, just work it out. To solve for QH with 0.7 in front of the high cost job and 0.3 in front of the low cost job, and then change those to 0.9 and 0.1, and then solve for QH again. What you'll notice is the answer for this question is it decreases. The quantity for the high cost job is gonna decrease. So again, if you're ever confused, go ahead and make up numbers and work through it. It's not gonna take you that long, but you will notice it's kind of easy to notice right away once, you, once you've changed that from 0.7 to 0.1 that you're really gonna have a lower QH. The reasoning behind that again is if we're more certain that we're gonna have a low cost job, the chance of a low cost job is even higher, we are 
therefore, if you can go to the extreme, if we had a 99% chance of having that low cost job, we pretty much are certain that we have the low cost job. We don't need to make that high cost quantity uh, and that high cost payment attractive to the point to incentivize him to tell us the truth if it is a low cost job because we pretty much know it is. So we don't have to make it so attractive for him to tell us the truth and we can therefore order even lower if it's a high cost job.